What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B. Thanks for tuning in to Together FTR. Nah, I'm just playing. It's your boy, Lambo. Yeah. 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 Let's get it. What's going on, fellas? I got some questions for you tonight. All right. I'm going to start off with, how did you start teaching, and what are your teaching styles? Um, I didn't. I definitely didn't start teaching in the in the way that most teachers do. Um I kind of went into a couple other careers first and uh, tried a few things, but uh, I've always been kind of a, a rough kid, and I always wish I had a teacher that like understood where I come from and 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 you know really saw me as a person, not just the trouble that I got in. So I decided uh, after I'd already started having kids and had had several careers that I wanted to go back and and do something different to make a difference. So I went right into uh, college to start learning to teach. And uh, it, it's definitely affected how I uh, how I teach, how I reach kids. I think one of the most important things is like build relationships comes first. If you're not building strong relationships with a kid, you can't teach them anything. You know, I, mean, I think it's important. They feel like that you just don't even matter. Like right. they don't even matter to you. I, I mean, I think one of the greatest uh, compliments I've ever had from a student is when a student says, "You know, hey, Mr. Lambert, you're just real. That's why we like you." And it's like, I think it's important to see them as people, not just a kid you know it's absolutely uh, i mean especially when you're trying to like mold them to go out into the world if you if they're going to go out into the world they got to know like if there's real real things that happen in the world that they need to be prepared for i mean i don't just teach history like i'm also teaching kids how to be resilient how to persevere through tough times how to take uh, how to take a lump and get back up you know absolutely. that's the most important things you can learn in life more than than any class you can have how to how to struggle through and, and just keep just keep fighting. That's actually one of the biggest things I learned in your class yeah. when I went to school there. I mean, that's the thing about teaching history is, is you can really hit that with a lot of people. You can talk about, you know, the things that people have gone through uh, in, in life and, and in different cultural situations and wars. And, you know, we talked a lot about, like, the African genocides and, like, Rwanda and yeah, how those people yeah. today are, are, like, even today, those people are living next door to people who slaughtered their families. And they're having to just like let go and figure out how, what's best for me. Just how do to, I move on? How do I get better? And I think when you study history, that's what's so great about history and social studies is like you you can really see lessons in other people's stories. Oh, absolutely. You know, you learn more from people's mistakes and your own mistakes than you learn from the things you do successfully. And, and when you study history, you're learning from everybody's everybody's mistakes yeah and it's easier to like level with people and have conversations in history i believe because it's hard to have like english conversations sometimes yeah, i mean i can teach topics. math i can't i can't teach you life skills the way that i do in social studies if i'm teaching you you know equations and you know please excuse my <laughs> yeah. dear aunt sally yeah. you know it's uh it, it's a little different you know because yeah, a lot of that stuff I don't even use. I do use a lot of math that I learned right. back in back it's, when it's I went. It's a different way. It's it's that practical math. You still use algebra and all that stuff. But, Absolutely. But history, it's not the you know, it's not so much just the the details of the story. It's the it's what's inside that story. What life lesson you're learning uh, from somebody, you know, from somebody's mistakes, from somebody's uh, come up. You know, they're coming up out of something. They're they're climbing up out of a, a darkness sometimes. Literally learning from our past mistakes and oh, yeah. trying to better our futures. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have another question for you. All right. Um, what do you enjoy about your work every day? I mean, I got to say my absolute favorite thing is, is this right here. You know, a former student of mine, being able to sit down and, and have a conversation and, and see the, the long-term uh, investment. You know, I, before I was a teacher, I, I did a lot of jobs that where I worked with my hands. And you got to see that immediate, like, I made this. Oh, I yes. I cooked this or I built this. And, and it's difficult in teaching because you don't see that. You know, nobody appreciates Mr. Lambert when they're still sitting in Mr. Lambert's class. Mm -hmm. A little bit, but not fully because you haven't finished that development of your product. You haven't yeah. seen this young person become a, a, a grown man yet and start seeing them really apply those life lessons. So that moment when later on you get to actually like see the things that that person has struggled with and that they pushed through and that you were able to see, hey, I think I might have actually inspired that kid a little bit. Absolutely. Like, that is the best feeling in the world. Uh, that's a really good one. And then the short term, you like that 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 wow moment whenever you teach a kid something, they don't get it at first. And they have that moment where I get it. That, that like, that light goes off. And you yeah, see absolutely. that, like, amazing feeling. And it's, it's a cool feeling as a teacher. Like, that's definitely one of my favorites. One of the biggest things that I, uh, after I graduated, I learned that, 
I didn't always apply myself in school and you yeah. would always push me to do that. And when I graduated and got into the real world, I finally learned like I got to I got to learn some shit because yeah. there's not a lot of things out there's not a lot of people out here that are willing to teach you. You got you got to teach yourself how to do things. You got to pursue the knowledge for that and I, that's one thing that I failed to do whenever I was in high school that I I would change if I could go back. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, you're not going to go back and make straight A's. But the big thing is, is you got to realize that when you're in school, life is about lessons. You know, life is always lessons. There's always something to be learned in everything you do, whether it's a failure or success. And, and I think that's something I've always really enjoyed is, is kind of seeing that moment later on when, you know, somebody has persevered through something. Oh. And it's a long lasting, like it sticks with them. They remember it forever. Oh, absolutely. I, uh... One of the biggest things I learned after I graduated was uh, not not a lot of people I know work know how to work on cars. Yeah, I mean, working on cars is detrimental because they you go anywhere they charge you whatever for yeah. something. Like I'm working on a car right now, and these people just threw this car together just to get it get a quick sale. Yep. Missed a bunch of stuff. There's bolts missing. There was a a, a it was like a railroad rod in the in the head bolts yeah. where the head bolts are supposed to be. I don't know what that means, but yeah. So it's <laughs> like uh, the the so you have the block that goes underneath the right. head, and then the head comes completely off. Okay. The block. Okay. And uh, when you crack I'm not those a car bolts, guy, but what I do is I learn. Oh, I watch absolutely. YouTube videos. And exactly. I, I do hey, it. hey, even I, one of my best friends, he's a mechanic. I yeah. learned a bunch of stuff from, him, and he. Before he does anything, he watches YouTube videos yep. to see what he's getting into before he gets into yep. it so he knows what to look I for. I do all my own home repairs and everything like that. You know, I usually say, I always tell my wife that uh, if I'm if I'm fixing something at the house, if the video says this is not for home use, unless you're a trained professional, don't do this. Uh, basically, I know that that's going to be a good video. You <laughs> yeah, know? absolutely. I'm, I might blow myself up or something, but it's okay. It's going to be a good video. I'm going to be able to fix something. I wouldn't r recommend doing uh, electric because... That's some dangerous things, man. It's too late for that. I've already done that. <laughs> My luck, I'm trying to do something like that. We had a breaker, a fuse breaker, yeah. it completely out for our water pump, uh, our water heater, and uh, we had to replace it. I don't know how to do that. Luckily, my stepdad knows how to. If I ever tried to do something like that, I'd launch myself across the room. I'd probably go through the wall. Nope. I'd be electrocuted, smoke rolling off me. Nope. <laughs> you said something there that I wanted to kind of pick back up on because I think it's really important that, like, to, to kind of mention. Uh, you said, you know, they're charging an arm and a leg to fix your car, and you can do it yourself, and it's just a little bit yeah. of learning. I, I wanted to kind of come back to that because it kind of comes back to something I taught the other day that uh, I think was important. I was trying to teach the importance of understanding government and understanding how our country works and how being a U.S. citizen works and what your role is in it and voting and things. And, you know, we've had conversations about that outside the podcast plenty of times. And um, one of the things I think is really, really cool to, to understand is that uh, it's like playing Monopoly. And it's the same thing with, with the car. Imagine that you and I are playing Monopoly and you don't know the rules. You don't know anything yeah. about it. I know all the rules. Am I going to be the kind of person that is going to teach you the rules slowly and not take all your money? Now, adding that, we're playing with real money. So uh, No one's going to do that. No. You, know, you don't know the game. You don't know the rules of the game with the car. Or we, as U.S. citizens, don't know the rules of how our government works. Therefore, who's going to be taking advantage of us and keeping us broke, keeping so, us broke um, apart? I you know? actually have a story for that one. My uncle had this truck, and he – I don't remember what kind of car it was, but he took this car engine and put it in this truck. Yep. And he had his brother-in-law do it or stepbrother or something like that. Yep. So they put it together, but they sabotaged it because... So they get more work day, later on? Days afterwards, they were like, we're trying to buy this truck from you. How much can I get off of you? How much? How, I got $500. Yep. And then he didn't. He refused to sell it to anybody. And then years down the road, he found out. He, he sold it because he had to go see his grandmother in the hospital. And then the person he sold it to got the truck running. And he was like, well, if you don't know anything about cars... Whoever worked on your car sabotaged your car. Yeah. How many days after the fact that you they got paid that in, fix, then yeah, it paid again. and then and it so you, got, you got set up. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of what I'm saying with, with government too, or just anything in life. You know, you got to know the rules of the game 
Otherwise, somebody's going to take advantage of you every single time. Oh, absolutely. You, know, if you don't know how the vote works. You don't know how, you know, your rights work. I mean, it's right now you can turn on YouTube anytime and see videos of people, you know, having their rights taken away because they didn't know any better. Literally. And, and it's, that's I, the thing. And that's why education, whether you're talking about a YouTube video about how to fix your car or you're talking about sitting down with a mechanic somewhere or you're, you're talking about sitting in a civics class or just look stuff up on a reputable site and actually like getting good information. Real uh, information. Absolutely. Not junk off of some website or, you know, watching some news channel you can't trust, but really getting in and digging in and learn that stuff. That's yeah. how you learn the rules of the game because, I mean, to go back to the Monopoly thing, me and you play Monopoly, we're playing for real money. You don't know yeah. the rules. Bro, I'm robbing you blind. 100%. Because that's and exactly you what... You can't blame anybody but that's yourself. What, that's what our government's going to do. You know, yeah. we don't know how the game works. They're going to make sure they're the ones on top. 100%. So... They're, they're, you're just a number. Another yeah. number into the system. Yeah. That you're they just, You're they just have. another cash cow. You're going to be making some money and paying some tax dollars. Literally. You're going to be spending some money on a car that's going to come right back. Yeah. Whatever it is. You know, everybody playing a game. Every single one of us is playing a game. And everyone, every single one of us is trying to get rich or just trying to get by. And uh, if you don't learn the rules, you're going to be somebody's mark. 100%. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, actually, I have some more questions right. for you. This is, tell me about your most exciting lesson, one that is remembered for a lifetime. <laughs> well, there's a lot. I've taught a lot of different lessons, but definitely one of mine. When I teach civics or I teach geography, my number one goal is to get my students have a better understanding of the world that they're part of. Uh, one of my absolute favorite lessons, because it really kind of changes uh, the way that, that students look at, um, at other cultures uh, within our own culture, is uh, I do want to, I call it a crowded box. And basically what I'm doing is teaching how different cultures um, are affected by just how crowded they are. We, we live in a pretty rural, not super rural, but fairly rural area where we're used to a lot of space, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, right now we're up close for, for the camera here. So, you know, but normally you and I would never sit this close because we don't like being more than, you know, yeah, that you far try to apart. Have space. Uh, because now, we live in an area that's not crowded. So in the class, what's pretty cool that I do is I, I basically make a very small box and have to stack it full of students. And the idea is what I'm doing is I'm comparing our population density here compared to like other Japan, yeah, where it's yeah. super crowded and they've, and they've adapted to it. Or they've even got cities. like the, yeah, in big cities and stuff. Like we're talking about Tokyo, where they've got like a 20 times the population density we do. And therefore, you know, rather than having one person in that crowded box, you got 20. And uh, you get to kind of see how the kids adapt and how they make sure it turns a certain way. It's the same thing as the way, you know, the Japanese build their buildings or the way they have like the, uh, have you seen the like, capsule hotels? Yes, seen those? yes, I have. They look, like, they look like you're in a laundromat sleeping in the dryer. Literally. You know? They're tiny. And, that's like the, uh, I mean, that's I'm a the big dude. I'm not a, little, I'm not a little guy, so uh, I, I might get in that and not get out. That yeah. might also be my uh, my casket. So <laughs> Yeah, you're down I'm, I'm not getting out of that thing. Um, uh, there's another thing that could go in with that. Well, like – like you said, with the uh, crowding yeah. here, you a lot of people haven't been to airports before. Yeah. I went to my first airport last year to go to Minnesota, and I'm going again here on the 26th, and I've never been so crowded in my life. Oh, yeah. Never been. I mean, we've had little little festivals for the Pope Landings Day and stuff. I, I've never seen anything that crowded. Social anxiety. I mean, could you imagine? I mean, oh we gosh. talk about it here in a place where we don't really have anybody up in our business all the time. There's no one, you know, cramming in. We're not riding subways or something. But imagine, yeah. like, people talk about social anxiety today. Imagine trying to ride a subway. You know, I, I took a group of kids to uh, New York several years ago. And um, that was one of the things that was the biggest shock for them was just that idea of, like, we come from this little town where, you know, you want to sit down somewhere, you're tired of walking, you just sit down on a curb. You can't uh, do that there. Uh, Somebody's going to run you over walking. Someone's going to run you over with a car. Or a you know, uh, you over asking I, I why, yeah. why aren't you following the yeah. rules? And, and everybody's all around you. Like, I had 40 kids with me, and we're trying to cross busy streets in New York, and my job basically was to chase the kids across the street. Because here, if you're still walking across the light turns, nobody's in that big of a hurry. Yeah. You don't have to be. It's not that crowded. There... That light turns, they're going to hit you or push you with a car one way or the other. 100%. So I literally was just chasing kids. I was always the last one out. Florida is like that. You better get out the way because yeah. people got places to go and yeah. things to do. And I think we, we kind of get spoiled in, in, a, in a smaller area like this where it's not quite so 
so crowded. But uh, it, that's definitely something that kind of shocked me was, was just seeing how, like, I'm adaptable. If you put me in a big city, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to adapt. Absolutely. But some of those kids were like fish out of water. You know, this is fucking around. Uh, can't get to breathe. Nothing crazy. I don't know if you've been to New York, but if you've ever been to, like, Times Square. I haven't that been is, to Times Square, ooh. but um, my mom was a truck driver. I've been okay. all over the place. Yeah. I've been in New York, but I haven't been to Times Square. Times Square is something else. You know, it definitely is uh, it's something pretty crazy. We uh, we had 40 kids there, like I said, and I'm trying to, you know, watch them, let them do different things. And uh, everybody's trying to sell you something. Everybody's trying to give you their their mixtape, you know. And uh, we had a guy. <laughs> we had a guy come up who was wearing a little bitty guy, but uh, he was all – buffed out and everything no shirt on wearing a pair of little booty shorts it was the weirdest thing ever come up and start trying to bum money off my students and, and you know me being the you know the big guy teacher I'm, i've got high school girls you know that this guy's yeah. coming up and talking to and i basically just kind of well, nudged had... out of the way and i've never seen this was he, he was ready to fight me right there in front of my students <laughs> it was it was insane uh, we just hired some two two uh, kids at work, and yep. someone came in, and like I watched them him ask for some money. He was trying to sell something, yeah. and then they turned around and like she was so uncomfortable, she just gave him money to, just to get him out of her face. It, and it's I was amazing just the like, scams that's crazy. That they, they come up with and stuff like all the time. Like they're oh here you can have this for free. I always told the kids you know don't take anything for free because it's not really free. And then yeah. two minutes later they're asking for money for what they just gave you for free. Um, it, it's constant, you know, it's all the time. And uh, even like I take a lot of kids like to Louisville. We go to a lot of a lot of competitions and things in Louisville. And um, you know I was they don't listen. Kids that never do, including you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know like once when I said you know even if someone asks for change, don't open it up. We had a group of kids who, who basically, not that far from me, opened up their wallet to give a guy a buck. All their money was gone. He just reached in, snatched it, and ran. And it's oh, like, no. it's because we live in this smaller community where everybody's a little bit more trusting. Yeah, everyone's always doing, trying to do the ra yeah. random acts of kindness, and yeah. they're just trying to give. There's no like, such thing as random acts of kindness in a big city. You can't do that in the real world. Like, no. In the real world, you can't do anything like that because you will get used 100 yeah. percent, they will drain you dry exactly exactly i mean it's people talk about like you know southern hospitality and things and i don't i don't so much think it's a southern hospitality i more so think with this that it's like uh it's almost like a um we're too trusting and uh we're just we haven't been taken advantage of or we haven't realized we've been taken advantage of you know yeah so yeah, it's a little different people are a little bit more you know they can be a little bit more uh obvious when they go to big city that's one flaw of mine was uh i i'm, I'm a nice person i just let everyone take advantage of me yeah, yeah. and most of the time when you're that nice you don't realize you're being taken advantage of oh yeah and, but once i once i figured out and learned from past mistakes and stuff that was it and now i don't not a lot of people are able to do that to me now trust is something that uh i don't give away i'll give away money before i give away trust you know, I don't 100%. give away trust easy and uh, definitely not to strangers and uh, definitely not to I love my students, but definitely not to students. I don't trust them at all. Uh, I love them, but I'm not going to trust them one bit. You know, you can't, you and, can't uh, trust, trust anybody. I trust my own kids. Yeah. My wife trusts my kids. You know, she'll believe anything they say. She'll call me and say, oh, my gosh, listen to what this teacher did. I'm like, don't believe a word they're saying. They're, they're little liars. <laughs> I love my kids, but they're little liars. That's what kids do. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Just. Telling stories. So, I got this last question for you. All right. What do you think is the best way to teach kids in your experience? I 100% think that uh, it, it is a build that relationship, but then the next step is to give them a, a, a groundwork of information, but then see kind of what entices them, what interests them in what you're talking about, you know. Um, there's nothing I love more than, you know, teaching the Bill of Rights and, and our rights within the amendments. And that was and a all great lesson I learned. I mean, you. I'm not going to lie. The kids that tend to pick up on that lesson are the kids are like, oh, I need to protect my rights at some point. 100%. You know, that, that kid that enjoys, you know, maybe not making the best choices in life. He's the one that's asking, well, tell me more about this Fourth Amendment. You know, <laughs> you can't search me. You know, they want to know more. And, yeah, that's uh, the one. That's the one that always gets them, yeah, like, tell me about or, this Or one. kids love to know more about, the, like, the I plead the Fifth, you know, the Fifth Amendment. Because and it's always it's never it's the kids that don't pay attention to anything else you do, and then you start talking about their rights, and they're like, "Oh, I got a question. What if I did this?" And uh, my biggest thing is just making sure that they find something within learning that uh, entices them, something that 
inspires them to learn more. Maybe so, it's not always with the best intentions. Yeah, to interact. They learned. They're interacting. They're talking. They're asking you questions. Yeah. They're they're opening up and being able to get comfortable with you to yep. have those conversations. Yeah, conversations are always good. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to my students all the time just to you know tell stories. And there's so many times that students will be like, "Oh, we we just." He just told a story, and then later on when we get through it, they realize, oh, that actually was learning. And, and that's really, really cool. I, I enjoy that moment of like, oh, I learned something I didn't mean to. I do the same thing with like how I get kids to study. You trick them. They don't know they're studying. They, you know, they think, like, I, I love, being, you know, we're having a test, and I'll say, okay, you can make a note card. Well, they spend all night making a little cheat sheet that they can write everything on. They take everything we studied for the last two weeks and scribble it real small. They're making their little cheat sheet. What they really did is they just studied. They didn't even know it. Yeah. Half the time when they do that, they don't even use the note card because they already put in the work. When half the time those kids, you know, they, they don't, no one does homework. No one wants I, to do homework anymore. I literally, I never did That's, homework. I, don't, I hated homework. I don't assign homework. homework. You know, studying for a test is, is the best kind of homework. Um, social studies, I don't have to. I'm not a math teacher. Math teachers kind of need that practice. I get that. 100%. Uh, mine's more, you know, conceptual. A lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll uh, do lessons that more so have them kind of investigate. One of my favorite things to do is interview questions. I always tell the kids it's social studies. Be social. So I'll give them interview questions about the topics that we're doing to ask a parent, someone in the community. If we're talking about, um, well, we talked about 9-11 a while back. My students mm -hmm. haven't, they were not even close to being born yet when 9-11 yeah. happened. So I had them interview a parent or grandparent and tell them, you know, what was it like that day? We, we live far away, but what was the change in our community? How was empty was the streets? And you know, I'll probably do one one day down the road where my students who weren't alive in 2020 interview somebody about what was it like when the world just shut down all at once? Because <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's fun. One of the best lessons I ever learned in school was when I had a lesson where I had to go and interview my grandfather about being a World War II vet. And that was awesome because he told me things he would never tell me before because he was mic'd up. You know, when you're mic'd up, you're willing to just spill it. I mean, you absolutely. Say I whatever. Think, I think learning how to interview people is, is like a good yeah. skill to have because yeah. uh, you got to know how to answer questions, yep. and it's better to learn by asking. Yep, absolutely. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, um, one of the one of the biggest things too with interviewing or being interviewed either one is just. To be comfortable talking, and that's something I don't think we do as well now because we've got technology. Yeah, every, you know, everybody's everyone's, everybody's so all teched out. Everybody, you virtual know, virtual reality. Yeah, everybody would rather. Reality. Yeah, everybody would rather shoot a text or or you know send a snap. I hate snap. Oh, bro, I hate. Here's when a someone... picture of my feet while I'm walking. Not my pick. Not, no, not feet pick. <laughs> you, gotta, you know, here's me you walking across town. Out. That's a little different. Um, I mean, just sending a one line text. I'd rather you know, hey, call me. But it's getting, it's crazy. It's because we don't know how to just talk and be able to just, I mean, like, you kind of know where you're going to talk a little bit and then just let it flow a little bit. I'm to the point now when someone messages me, I don't even reply to them. I no. just, I call them like, yeah. why didn't you just, why didn't you call me? Listen, I am a big fan of just talking on the phone. Just uh, let me, let me get out. You, know, you, you don't get their emotions L or what they're going literally, through. Literally, the language or barrier, they're, they're emotional struggling. barrier. There's, there's, there's emotional detachment and uh even my own mother like i love my mother that's my girl you know my number one fan i'm her number one fan love her to death but she'll text me something i'm like oh, i'll just call mom and have a long conversation my mom will just reply back in a text and i'm like no i want to talk to you let's at least <laughs> video chat let's do something if you don't want to just talk on the phone let's do something because I, I have to have that emotional connection yeah absolutely and i can't do that from reading a bunch of texts no so. you're just reading words and most of the time people aren't that grammar tech so right. it's just reading a script that you don't know what emotion is talking in person like this you, there's nothing there's, you can't get anything from yeah that, no you know? there's nothing you can uh, misconstrue. i'm a little old school when it comes to technology i mean i like some technology I like my video games and stuff oh absolutely. but uh I, you know when it comes to communication there's nothing better than a face-to-face -face talk you absolutely. know or a phone call you know in some way as i say this my phone's ringing in my pocket but uh you know you gotta you gotta call somebody to really get a feel for what's going on they can text me all day long and tell me about it but i, I gotta i gotta get that emotional connection you know absolutely so, especially your mom you know i love you mom call me <laughs> so you know you got to so you gotta have that call so i'm a big fan of that all right party people make sure that you send us some questions leave some comments below and let us know what you want ftr to talk about let us know what interests you what you think good topics would be give us something to go off of and let us uh you know give our take on it